Uh, we're using the RF elements, um, symmetrical 60 degree horns. We're actually getting ready to upgrade uh, all of those sectors at that site uh, from EPMP 2000 to uh, 3000. And for that, we're using the dual horn setup from uh, Cambium. Actually, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, foothills and mountains and, and peaks and stuff around here that uh, do make it a challenge uh, for coverage. And so we've been very strategic about where we build our, uh, our sites uh, in order to, to, to get coverage around obstacles like that. Uh, but uh, once we get into a pocket, yeah, the, the terrain is, is fairly flat. Um, as for the rain, I mean, it, it's a pretty dry climate. It doesn't rain often here, uh, but when it does, it gets pretty rowdy. So. Uh, we do have to worry about rain fade, even though it, uh, you know, we don't have a, a lot of events. Uh, when they do happen, it, uh, it can create issues with links. Uh, yes, actually, because it, it, it does shield some noise, um, you know, coming from the, the, the more densely populated areas. Um, so it's a, it's a double-edged sword, you know. I mean, uh, it helps us in some, time, in some regards and uh, is a hindrance in others. It depends on how it performs. Uh, the clients, we're using strictly 25 dB um, gain antennas for clients. So even at that close range, we don't we, uh, use the smaller uh, antennas. Uh, we can always uh, you know, set the uh, subscriber CPE uh, radio to, to do the auto power uh, so that we target a specific uh, RSSI. Well, SNR kind of kind of is what it is based on you know where where the uh, radio is sitting as far as frequency. Um, so we target the RSSI and make sure the chains are balanced really well. I've uh, made sure that my installers understand that the chain balance is actually more important than the highest, the highest RSSI. But we uh, send them on a target level and so they know what uh, signal level they should be looking for. We can uh, determine whether or not it's a good link just by looking at where it is. You know, I know the area really well too. Um, <clears throat> we also use tower coverage, which gives us a path analysis, a, a crude one you know, that we can use just to make sure that they can see a tower from that location. You know, in building this network out here, we really changed you know, people's lives. You know, uh, they're able to work at home and school at home. Uh, you know, the types of things that, uh, that this pandemic has kind of uh, pushed to the, to the front burner. Um, so that's the, our customers are, are generally very grateful that we brought you know a service that works to them and uh, makes you feel good about what you're doing. Those that weren't able before to to, to consider moving into a place like this, you know, because it's pretty rural, uh, yeah, are able to do that now. Um, I've actually had customers that uh, uh, one of them told me that that they had to give up their job to move out here uh, because they didn't have good enough internet to do it, and uh, they were recently rehired um, because uh, they have internet service that, that does the job now. So. That's pretty cool. I think we can do a higher higher speed plans. Um, we're doing some experimenting with another site right now to see. Um, but uh, uh, the main thing is to make sure that we have sufficient capacity so that we don't end up uh, you know, bottlenecking and, and speeds degrading. I, I just want to say that uh, you know pre-seam is a big part of uh, uh, of our network monitoring, and uh, it's been a huge help and uh, as, as a first place for us to go to see uh, what the customer experience is. Uh, once we get that uh, um, bird's eye view type information, we can start digging in deeper and figure out what's going on. But that's the first place that we go.